Cool. Um, good morning. I'm in Queensland, so I'm still a bit uh, funny with the time, but I'm very thankful for uh, to the Australian Wildlife for the support to my project and for the opportunity to chat a little bit more about it today. But initially, I would like to acknowledge the Turbo and Yugara people, the first owners of the land where QT now stands. And I recognize that these lands have always been places of teaching, research, and learning. A little bit about me. I'm a Brazilian biologist. I love citizen science and land care, and that's what drove me to do this project. As you might be aware of, we have a wildlife crisis. We are losing wildlife species, and this is just getting worse. The situation in Australia is no different. As you can see here on the graph on your right, we're still losing species here in Australia. The main causes of it, as you might know, is loss of habitat, wildlife of exploitation, and invasive species. Oh, sorry. Uh, worldwide, we have nations getting together and uh, getting an agreement about goals, how to tackle this issue. You might have heard of the IT target and sustainable development goals. Nationally, we have policies and regulations trying to solve this as well. However, the government alone, uh, effort alone is not enough. You can see here on the map on the left that most of the land in Australia is privately managed. And that's the reality as well in the world. And on top of that, most of the threatened wildlife species in Australia overlaps with this, with this type of management. Actually, we have a few species that only occur in this type of management, like the big me blue tongue lizard and the shape lizard area here on the screen. But what we all have to do with that? The thing is, nature has a series of valuable contributions to people. In a great example, it's here on your left. We can see that when we have vegetation, the water is cleaner and healthier when we compare to areas that doesn't have as much vegetation on top of it. And we all need clean water, don't we? So from that, what we can take off is that the actions that people do through their environment affect wildlife and nature, and consequently affect the resources and conditions that are available to people. In that sense, we can see private land care as a combination of people and nature, so as a whole. But what exactly we are calling private land conservation? It's where landholder managers their land with purpose of preserving nature and wildlife. In Australia, some words related to it are land care, land for wildlife, conservation covenants. It can be a formal when you go into an agreement with the government or an agency, or it can be informal when just as an, as an example, when someone, a land manager, decides to do some weeding, some tree planting in their land, having the protection of wildlife and nature uh, in their mind. It has series of benefits for both wildlife and people. In terms of wildlife, we have increase of numbers, variety, more living areas. And for people, some examples can be tax rebates. You, have, you can make friends and you can improve your health. But the thing is, we already know that wildlife have higher benefits when people are also being benefited. On top of that, the government is putting a lot of money on private land conservation, but these, these initiatives are failing to incorporate people and nature relationships in their development. Consequently, they are not being as effective as they could be. They could be also actually saving a bit of money if we think in that way. And that's our plan to tackle this issue. We initially are gonna look into the global knowledge and try to understand what we already know about connections of outcomes of people and nature. For example, when people are more satisfied with their life and when we have more amount of trees planted. And we're gonna combine this information with some local case studies. We're gonna go chat with land, uh, land managers about the experience with private land conservation. And we're going to match uh, this, these uh, locations with wildlife outcomes. From this information, we're going to be able to understand the conditions that allow benefit for both people and nature. For example, if a formal or informal PLC uh, can deliver at the same time 
uh, uh, happiness to people and, wild, for example, more wildlife flowers. All this information then we're going to put into a tool that help decision makers to allocate resources better and also to support land manage they are ready in these um, private land conservation initiatives. We hope with this that agencies like the Biodiversity Conservation uh, Trust and the Queensland Trust for Nature can keep going with their great job with private land conservation. Thank you. Obrigada.